I think there's a big misconception when it comes to mellow cigars or mild cigars. I think a lot of people think that's just for when I first start out, when I'm a beginner, or maybe the first cigar of the day for a seasoned smoker. But the way I view it is that, you know, there's a time and place for all different blends. So when you're in the mood for a mellow cigar or a mild cigar, they really hit the spot. So I think that people have to get that notion out of their head. You know, I start there, I can't go back there. You know, you think about it this way. That means that you would only drink stouts or full body beers and never go sliding back into maybe an IPA or a Pilsner, right? Or just having steak with every meal or beef with every meal, right? Sometimes you want sushi and champagne. You want a mellow meal, right? A nice light meal. Something that's gonna wake up your palate. And what I'm really searching for in, those, in that beverage world, right? And in that food world as well, sometimes you're just searching for something different. And I view cigars the same exact way. So for me, I could always dial it back into a mellow or mild blend and truly appreciate it. I don't think you graduate past that. I think a lot of people have that misconception that once you've been there, you don't revisit it because you've moved on to stronger blends. But if you just smoke bomb after bomb, spice bomb after spice bomb, your palate is gonna be accustomed to that. But then again, you're gonna cheat yourself of the nuances of mellow cigars. So today, we're talking about my top five mellow cigars. Let's get into it. You know, all the cigars we're gonna to discuss today on my top list of mellow cigars all have the same common denominator. They have character. You know, when you smoke a, a, a mild or a blend or a mellow cigar, you want something that has character, but also has a milder, approachable flavor profile. You know, uh, you want a cigar that kind of gets out of its own way, but you also don't want to sit there and smoke air. Uh, you know, fortunately, there's not many cigars out there like that, but I've smoked some cigars that will go unnamed that are nice and mild, but there's just not enough character there for me. That's why on my list today, all the cigars have character and approachability. So right now I'm smoking the Ashton Classic. So, you know, Traditionally, this would be called the Lonsdale. Uh, six and a half by 44, six and a half by 42. It's usually a Lonsdale size. And it's, it's really unusual because the Ashton 898 is almost like an anomaly in the cigar world because Lonsdales overall, historically, are not big sellers. People look for more Robusto, Toro, Churchills, Perfectos, Figurados. And the Lonsdale size is a phenomenal size that kind of got lost, in my opinion, over the years. And a lot of factories don't dedicate people to make this size because it doesn't sell as well, maybe, as other sizes. But the Ashton 898, historically, in all the years I've been in the cigar industry, has always been one of the best-selling Lonsdales on the market, and for good reason. It's a phenomenal blend, and it's an elegant blend, and I think it's fitting in an elegant size. So obviously you're tasting a lot of this is true Connecticut wrapper, US Connecticut wrapper. With the thinner ring gauge like the 898, you really taste a lot of the character from that Connecticut wrapper. Obviously Dominican filler, Dominican binder, really creamy notes, toasty notes. Uh, I, people will say sometimes it has like a buttery note to it. And you hear people talk about that in wine terms, it has a buttery note. Um, but a very kind of polished cigar, uh, has a ton of character as I said, and very much a finesse blend. Uh, there's a lot of layers of flavor, and that's the beauty of mellow cigars. I think, again, a lot of people, they think that mellow cigars can't have that dynamic. That is absolutely not true. As a matter of fact, mellow cigars will always have a place in my humidor. Now, predominantly, of course, I'm gonna gear my humidor and my collection towards more of a full body, because I'm obviously a seasoned smoker now. But if you don't have a mellow or mild selection in your humidor, you're doing yourself an injustice. There's gonna be times when you wanna to go to a mellow cigar and you wanna enjoy it because it challenges your palate. It really wakes up your palate. So I think all cigar enthusiasts and any cigar collector should have a mild to mellow collection in their humidor to round out your humidor. You know, you think about if you have a wine collection, you might be a fan of California cabs, you know, big, juicy red wines. 
But in that collection, you have to have some Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio maybe. You know, there's gonna be an occasion that calls for that. You know, you're sitting down, you're having fish, you're having sushi. You're not gonna pull out a big cab, right? No, you're gonna go down to your wine cellar, your wine cabinet, and you're gonna pull out a Sauvignon Blanc, maybe a Pinot Grigio, a Chardonnay. So that's why I said, there's a time and place for everything. So just like in the wine world, same thing with cigars. There's always gonna be a time and place for me when it comes to a mellow or mild cigar. So next up is the La Roma de Cuba, Connecticut. And the reason why it has risen in my ranking as far as my favorite cigars in general is because it's a very unique blend. It uses an Ecuadorian shade grown wrapper, Nicaraguan filler binder, made in the My Father factory, of course distributed by Ashton, but a very unique flavor profile. You know, there's not many cigars I could say that have a kind of like a butterscotch note to it, a buttercream note to it. There's notes of like light roast coffee there, right? Vanilla notes to it, but it also has a ton of character to it. Uh, so, and I, you know, when you switch country blends, when you go from a Dominican cigar, you go to a Nicaraguan cigar, just like you want diversity as far as strengths of the cigars in your humidor, you also want different country blends because they hit the palate differently. You know, today the common theme is we're talking about mild, mellow cigars, but we also want to challenge our palate and have them hit different parts of our palate because each country adds a different flavor note that maybe another country won't. We all know we're reaching for a mellow cigar at the time. We know in our mind we're expecting that kind of experience, but how they hit the palate should also be very different. So next up on my list is our Toro Fuente Grand Reserva. You know, it comes in a multitude of sizes, Raw Child, Provada Number no. 1. This happens to be the 858. As a matter of fact, this is the 858 Natural, which is used as a Cameroon wrapper but it also comes in Maduro, it comes in Candela, that green wrapper, right? But then when you talk about the Rosado or the Sun Grown series, they start leaking into that medium body world. It's Habano wrapper, it has some spice, but it'll really show you how the wrapper of a cigar influences the flavor profile. So, but you know, I always find myself going back when I want a mellow cigar to either the Maduro or the natural wrapper. Once in a while, I'll mess with the Candela wrapper, but for me, the Cameroon wrapper on the A58 natural does it for me every time when I'm looking for a mellow cigar with a ton of character. So next up on my list is a cigar that really pushes the boundary of what a mellow cigar is. This is the San Cristobal Elegancia. And the reason why I said it pushes the boundaries because the leading note from this cigar to me is always kind of a white pepper note. So when I think when you think about mild or mellow cigars, you're not really thinking about a peppery quality of a cigar. But as I said, this cigar kind of pushes that boundary. It has a pepper note, but it's a whisper. It's, it's, you know, it's a leading note of the cigar, but it's not overwhelming. It's not gonna bombard your palate with a ton of spice. You know, Ecuadorian shade wrapper, Nicaraguan filler binder. It's a cigar that I've you know, thoroughly enjoyed over my years of smoking cigars. Uh, it's a cigar that I always go back to when I'm looking for something that really is that transition cigar between a really mild cigar, mellow, buttery, creamy notes, vanilla, maybe coffee. Then I want a mellow cigar that has a white pepper note to it, accompanied by also those toasty and creamy notes. I think the elegancy is deceiving in a good way. You know, we always talk about on this channel how, you know, we smoke with our eyes. You're presented with a shade grown wrapper cigar and you just assume it's not really gonna have any kind of peppery quality to it all. You know, you're expecting notes of kind of like maybe vanilla, kind of like a toasty note to it, a buttery note to it. And that's where the elegancy really surprises you because it does have a note of that white pepper accompanied by notes of maybe coffee and nuts. But I love the fact that it's different. It really stands alone in its category of mellow cigars. And it's something that's constantly in my rotation and for good reason. It's a phenomenal blend. So last up on my list is the Dominican Monte Cristo, the original Monte Cristo line. So obviously iconic brand name, well known by its Cuban cousin. This Dominican variation is a much different animal than its Cuban cousin. You know, as a matter of fact, I would say this is definitely on the milder side of all the cigars we're discussing today. Mild to medium body, 
but it definitely, you know, even like for a newer smoker, this is a cigar I think people stumble upon because of the iconic name. And you know, it winds up working out just fine because the Monte Cristo is definitely the mildest of the mellow cigars we're discussing today. You know, toasty notes, excellent construction, a beautiful pale yellow shade grown wrapper, but obviously you can't ever go wrong with a Monte Cristo. And it definitely had to make my list of my top mellow cigars. Let me know what your favorite mellow cigar is. Drop me a comment. But before we depart, make sure you hit that like button, you smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you here next time.